All right, so stoichiometry involving um, uh, molar volume as well as mass and, of course, conversions to moles and that sort of stuff. So the question here says, what volume of hydrogen, obviously volume of hydrogen gas, at STP can be produced when 6.5 grams of zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid? Okay, so this is a typical question. And again, the steps in doing stoichiometry uh, problems all right, you first of all have to write a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do here. The balanced chemical equation. So hydrogen is going to be produced. So I'm going to put hydrogen over here. And of course, hydrogen by itself is always H2 because it's diatomic. You've got to remember that. Part of the diatomic 7. So what's going to happen? Zinc is going to be reacting with hydrochloric acid. So we have zinc. That's just ZN is going to be reacting with, who remembers what hydrochloric acid is, what the formula is? HCl, right? Hydrogen and chlorine. Very good. Now, is this the complete chemical equation? I only have hydrogen accounted for on the other side. That's not complete. Now, do we have to complete it? We have everything we need. We have hydrogen, all right? We have zinc, we have hydrochloric acid. Why don't we just move on from there? Because we have to balance the equation. That's right. How would we know the molar ratio unless we have a complete equation that's balanced properly? So we do need to finish the equation off. And uh, again, you guys might, you know, kind of understand, okay, what do you have, or what are we missing on the other side? We're missing zinc and chlorine, right? So what would be the uh, compound of zinc and chlorine when they combine? Check the... Uh, uh, Check the charges, right? Because it's zinc is a positive charge, chlorine's a negative. What's the charge on zinc? It's plus two, and chlorine is minus one. So what's my correctly written formula here now? ZnCl2. Yes. Okay, does everyone see that? That's my correctly written formula. And is this equation, well, we've got everything accounted for, but is it balanced now? It's not balanced, is it? So, let's balance it. I see I have two H's here and only one here, as well as two chlorines over here and only one over here. So if I put a two there, that would take care of the hydrogens and the chlorines, and I notice that uh, zinc is just one and one. So, here we go. That should be balanced, is that correct? Does that look okay to you guys? All right, so really the first stage of stoichiometry is, is completed here. Correctly written equation, and it's balanced. All right, very, very important. So now what we do is we're going to uh, identify what we're given and what we're asked for, and then we're going to come up with that process of solving. So what are we given? Hmm, 6.54 grams of zinc. So in these questions, how I've instructed you with this flow chart method is you put what you're given underneath the um, compound in the equation. So I would put that 6.54 grams right there under zinc because we're given zinc. Now we are going to be looking for a volume of hydrogen. So guess what? You're going to put a blank space under hydrogen here. And just so we remember what we're looking for, we're going to write liters there. Okay? We're going to write liters there. I'm going to get rid of these lines here. Okay. Okay, is everyone with me so far? Are you with me here so far? Okay, so the flow chart method. All right, well, because the uh, coefficients in the equation are molar ratios, we cannot go from, well, obviously we can't go from grams to liters, right? You can't just say, hey, it's a one-to-one -one ratio right on. It's 6.54 liters. Done. This is easy. Okay, you cannot do that. Obviously, you can't do that. We're talking about very different units, so you can't do that. What we do need to do, though, is convert to what? Moles. Moles. Very good. That's the first step. Con and how do we go from grams to moles? Well, if we just go back up here to our handy-dandy little chart, grams down this arrow to moles means I have to divide by the grams per mole of what I'm given. So we're going to do that. 6.54 divided by the grams per mole of zinc, which is 
So 6.54 divided by 65.39. Boy, that's going to be uh, pretty close to 0.1, isn't it? Yeah, 10% looks like. So let's just do that on our calculator because we want to use as many decimal places as possible. 6.54 divided by 65.39. 0 0. 0.1000. 0. Okay, so that is awesome. 0. 0.1000. 0. 0. So that's pretty much just 0. 0.1. It's as close as we can get. Everyone good with that? You okay there? You understand that? So now what we need to do is we need to convert over now across to moles of H2 and this is where you use the molar ratio. So we've got a one to one ratio in our correctly written chemical equation. One to one ratio means I have exactly that many moles and I'm going to use a different color here now. I have the same number of moles of this. It's a one to one ratio. And if you don't believe me, remember the little shortcut I told you? Um, multiply by whatever number this is, one, divided by whatever number this is, one. That's always your factor. That's what you do. Whatever this number is, divided by this number, and that's what you multiply by. Okay? What's the next step for those of you that remember? We have to obviously go back up here, don't we? Yeah. So look at, I'm given moles here. I've got moles, and I'm trying to find liters. So this is now the new thing on the chart. So how do I go from moles to liters? If you've forgotten, we look back at our chart. Moles, now going along the arrow here to liters at STP, what do I do? Multiply by 22.4. It's as easy as that. You don't have to mess around with grams per mole here. So times. 22.4. So that's going to be 0 0.1000 times 22.4. Oops, I didn't need to write that X and the dot. See that? And so what do you get? Well, that's just going to be 2.24. Let's multiply that by 10%. Okay, so we have 2.24 liters of H2. That's your answer right there. Now does that, uh, does that make sense? Does everyone agree with that? Is there anything that's missing there? Okay, that's our simple gas stoichiometry. That's kind of a mass volume stoichiometry problem.